a real part of it. Um, I mean, I'm I'm currently pitching TV shows and feature films and stuff, and it's just it's just brutal um, <laughs> going on and, and just constantly be told told you know, especially in in the meeting. Oh, this is great, and then you get the feedback like this sucks, whatever. And like, <laughs> just tell it to my face. <laughs> um, but uh, so we're seeing the culmination, so to speak, of you. I mean, you won. Like you're here. What was the journey up the, up to that point? Do you still do you have it out in other contests? You know, like what was the failure story? I feel like we don't talk about that enough, but it's, it's I feel like it's extremely important. Do you want, Faith? Do you want to start us off? Uh, yeah. Um, the novel came from my kind of failed experience as a track and field athlete. You can easily see some videos of me just getting my butt whooped in races. Um, <laughs> and then the novel again, like. There's just like structure wise, looking back at it, I'm like, why did somebody let me put this on paper? <laughs> um, but it just was a great learning opportunity. I fully embrace failure. I encourage failure. I'm a believer of fail fast um, and fail often so that you can kind of make those mistakes because the worst thing you can do is have this body of work that is completed, full, ready to go, and then get the, oh, this sucks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, again, I'm just falling back into feedback. It's just important to not be afraid to fail. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, yeah. I think for me, my, one of my big things is I love being the thing I love about the Atlanta community is there are so many different areas of art, and there's a level of being able to pass through these different groups and be a part of these different groups. And so for me, I love trying new things. Like I've done improv, acting. I know this guy from my couple of years being a professional wrestler. Um, I've tried a little bit of everything. And so what that does is, if you're trying a bunch of things, it means you're going into these different areas and failing miserably. Uh, but get so much from those experiences. I've been doing improv at Dad's Garage for about 15 years, and we, we still have a little plaque on the wall and it is uh, dedicated to the worst scene in improv history. Um, and I remember it because uh, we had a terrible scene um, and the audience like was like, oh, they don't like it. And for whatever reason, we got super nervous and we doubled down and we did the next scene, it was worse and worse to the point that the audience started booing us. And one of our improvisers just like walked off stage, walked through the lobby, got in their car, drove off in the middle of the show. It was, it was just terrible in front of everyone. Um, <laughs> It was funny, like 30 years ago, NPR did a story on the worst improv scene ever about us and our failure. But the whole point of it, it, it yeah, you know, was it recorded? Yeah. It, Can I see it? <laughs> <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? Uh, but uh, the great thing about like being boo uh, on stage is that it uh, there's not there's not a whole lot worse than that, right? There's not a lot that you can be. Uh, more terrible than that. And so it's given me this kind of um, bravery to jump into things that I'm not prepared for and just see how it goes. And so um, doing this has been absolutely a series of failures. There's a million jokes that I made on stage that I was thinking about for this thing that didn't work, that didn't land. Um, I remember uh, going through the writing process of a play, I had a director, uh, Tiffany Porter, and so she was help, she was reading it, reading it for me, and I remember one of the most like painful notes was, so this is about you, and I was like, yes, it is about you. It's like, I can tell, because this character is written terribly. And I was just like, <laughs> and I was like, what? And so she like pointed out, you wrote this so much about you that this character has no flaws. Mm -hmm. That this character, and everything has happened to this character. This character did nothing to deserve it. Like, I know, that's my life. <laughs> like, no, that's terrible writing. Um, that the character has to have flaws. And there's so many, so many of those moments where I was told, like, with my, my great friends that I love dearly, like, this part is terrible. And having an honest conversation about why it is. And being willing to hear that and make adjustments. And so it's been a series of failures. Um, and then, you know, applying to a lot of different places and getting rejected, making to the second round and getting rejected, getting those feedbacks from the, the blacklist feedbacks are always fun. Because uh, you get one and it's just like this huge score and it's like, mm -hmm. awesome, this is great. And I need two more and they're all like super bad. Yeah. And so it's like, it's, it's being rejected, it's 
lots of different levels of feedback. It's being told it's bad because of this, and then told the opposite that it's great because of this, and not knowing which way to go. And so it's a long series of failures. And like, I would argue that like, is this truly a success? Like, this is a great experience to be here. It's wonderful, but is it the end of the journey? And I think there's more to the journey, right? There's more to do. So for me, this is like, this is great, but this is gonna have a stopping point at some point, and I'm gonna start the whole process over, and I'm gonna go, and I hope they'll get farther the next time, but it's gonna stop at some point, and I'm gonna start all over, and it's an ongoing thing that I have to be ready to take that ride for. Yeah, one of the features that I'm pitching right now, I have got it on the contest, the first feedback I got was, like you said, it was just like, this is amazing. This is the best script that I've ever read. Like, this should be made right now. And I'm just like, yes, here we go. The next one is like, this person has no idea what they're doing. <laughs> Can I, just maybe some consistency, like just a little bit. That would be great. Yeah. But it all depends on who reads it and what they had for breakfast that day. Like, exactly. there's no selling. Yeah. Michael? I, uh, ever since I, I was a, a young boy, um, have really been, been driven by uh, spite <laughs> and, uh, in, in my career, you know, as, as a teacher, as an actor, as a, as a writer, um, you know, I, 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 I've lived most of my life in a world of rejection. Um, as, a, as a teacher, you know, I'm, I'm in front of 30 people who immediately want to reject everything that comes out of my mouth, and I have to prove to them that I'm better than that and that I will win. Um, you know, as, a, as an actor, you get, I send stuff out all the time and it's just, you know, rejection, rejection, rejection. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, you just wait. <laughs> you, because you're gonna, one day, you're gonna be like, oh, yeah, we were gonna hire that guy and we didn't and now he's famous. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> same thing, uh, you know, with, with writing, at least as a, as a fiction writer, uh, they at least send you rejection letters. They don't, they don't do that. I have a framed one from, from Francis Ford Coppola's um, uh, company. And uh, it was handwritten, it was very nice. Uh, but I'm like, oh, I'll show you. Oh yeah? Oh, not good enough, huh? I'm gonna do one better. And eventually, you know, if I'm not dead first, um, I'll, I'll succeed. But I know that that's a trap because um, you know, success doesn't, isn't an, an end point. And um, so it's, in, I just have to, Mike, Mike Birbiglia, the c comedian, talked about how he was able to keep going as a comedian even though he would get off stage and he would have had, like, just bomb. I'm talking to one person and there's like at least five in here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he got off stage and, and yeah, and, and he had to tell himself, even though no one was clapping, even though there were boos, he'd get off stage and go, <laughs> and convince himself of that and be like, next time I'm gonna kill harder. Nice. And uh, so yeah, I just want to murder people. Oh, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> I just want to, you know, uh, show people I can be better than them. Out <laughs> of darkness. <laughs> in humor, so it's great. It's a delivery. Spot on. Uh, I want to put you in my next commercial. Uh, I you know, I was going to fit. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have to. Uh, failures, and, and if, you, if you ask my father, all I've ever done my entire life is fail. So uh, I got that going for me. Um, but, you know, why, why this? Um, and what am I doing now with it? So, um, when I first moved to Los Angeles, uh, when I lived there, um, I moved right next door to, well, next boat, I moved on the sailboat, um, to a casting director, and the very first thing that she said to me was, if you wanna be in the filmmaking industry as an actor or as a writer or whatever, you have to start making your own stuff. You have to. There is no A-list celebrity that does not own their own production company. Get making your own shit. So I really took that to heart. I started writing and directing. Uh, I directed 200 comedy sketches. That got the, the attention of people at Funny or Die, so then I started uh, being the brand content for Funny or Die, making Funny or Die style uh, commercials, and then um, all I ever wanted to do was be a series regular on a TV show. Uh, and so, I would always ask advice to people. Anytime I was on set, if I booked a TV role, like how do I get to the next step? And I, I would always seek out the showrunners uh, and the producers when I was on set for acting. And I would always ask them, how do you make it? 
what do I need to do? Um, and no matter what, 100% of the time, without fail, unequivocally, I took their advice and I did what everything told me to do. And, um, and it that's never- That's how you got that tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the stubborn thing. Uh, and, and, and it never worked. That every time I would follow their advice to the nth degree and, and nothing ever came of it. Um, and I found out that the only way, in my personal opinion, you will ever make it and you're doing it the right way is by networking. That's it, 100% of the time. Like, if you wanna make it in this industry, you have to meet somebody that says yes. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter, like, one of my shorts almost won, uh, or one, one, that was a lie. Uh, one of my film uh, short films that I wrote and directed won all of the film festivals, and it was up for Oscar both. And then, um, as luck would have it, the because the, every five years they pick a comedy to be best live action short, uh, and the one that I would win a festival, and this other film would win a festival, and then I win it, and then his would win it, and then he ended up getting the um, the Oscar nomination for best live action short. And then, as luck would have it, like three weeks later after the Oscars, I was on set with him, just super randomly. He was the lead of the film, and I was the supporting person. And I was like, what did that do for your career? Like, you were fucking at the Oscars, your name, you were on camera, I saw it all. And he's like, the day after the Oscars, my agent got a phone call from another agent at William Mo Morris saying, congratulations, that's it. <laughs> that's for being nominated for an Oscar. And he's, and I was like, so what now? And he's like, my agent's gotta get it out there. Like, the only, like, it does not matter how many film festivals you win, in my personal opinion, I've won a lot for, that's how it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, pretentious. Yeah, true. <laughs> Here yeah. Again. And, and, and you know, I've, I've tried a, a million things and failed my way to the absolute bottom. And and when I'm and I'm autistic, so it's really really hard for me to network. But when I'm looking up at all of my friends, all my very successful, famous friends, I ask them like, "What am I fucking missing?" And he's like, "The producer to say yes. You've got to meet the right producer. That's it." You gotta find a way to get into a video. So when you were saying I'm a failed screenwriter, but I've heard the fact that you pitched, I've won a, uh, I've done okay at film festivals uh, for writing and directing and all of that stuff, but I have never in my entire life pitched a project mm. ever. Hard stuff. I've never, I've never met the person. I've never been able to network to get a pitch with a screenwriter or a showrunner mm -hmm. or a network or anything. Never once have I ever pitched. Mm -hmm. So. I'm missing whatever you have. If, you could, if we can combine the forces, <laughs> you know, get machine guns. You have all the talent. talent and, uh, you know, and, and maybe, maybe then something. But like, I don't know how to succeed because I've never. You know, all of my friends. This is the last thing I'll say. All of my friends that are famous series regulars on TV shows during pilot season, they go out 15 times a week for 15 different pilots. They had so many opportunities during pilot season, like they were drowning with how many auditions they had. I have never in my entire life, and I've been a television actor for 14, 12, 14 years, I have never even auditioned for a pilot. So like, you gotta get better agents. You gotta get better somebody. You gotta network your ass off, and I do not know how to do that. So that's why I'm a fan. I, so I wanna kind of think back on what you're talking about, because I, I think Ultimately, I think a, a very important part is changing your relationship with the idea of success and failure. Um, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California, and the cool thing about that was my dad had like a very normal suburban job, but I was in LA, so you meet a lot of people that get different roles and at different levels of success. And what was fascinating, I started seeing this pattern, right? Um, you get in there and you feel like, Everybody knows more than I do in this sort of indie world. And you work really hard to get something done and you get something sold. The moment you get something sold, you're like, I have success. The next day you find yourself in this different group, right? Now you're in a group of people who have gotten things sold. Mm -hmm. And what you realize is you are at the bottom rung of the group of people who got sold. And now you feel like, oh man, I don't know anything. All these other people are talking about their second, third, fourth thing that they're sold. I've only sold one, I'm the weakest link. You work super hard to get to the top of that. You get into like, I've won these awards. Great, you're in this new category. You only won one award. I mean, it goes it goes to all the way up to like, I won an Academy Award. Now you won one Academy Award. Like, there's, there, you're always going to be the weakest person in your group 
in your mind because you see success as what are all my friends doing and how I want to be as successful as your friends. The problem is when you get success, you get a new group of friends who are also way more successful. Mm -hmm. And so this idea, if there's this thing that we're hunting for that like, if I get to X spot, then I will be happy, wrong. Um, if you're not enjoying getting to X spot, then you're never gonna be happy. You have to find the joy and the enjoyment of the challenge of learning and growing. And if you can find happiness there, you're gonna be happy because that is going to be your entire career, regardless of how successful or unsuccessful you are. So if you define where your I am happy point is, like when do you stop chasing the next round? I'm, I'm happy right now. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm having a great freaking time. I'm, in, I, I'm a finalist for a, a film festival. I never thought that would be so. Yeah, you fucking are. Yeah. Her script next year. I'm gonna write a better one, but it's not. But it's not because I'm like trying to beat her or trying to better than her. I'm like I would. It would be fun to try again, right? It'd be fun to be here again. And you know what? Next time I might submit, and I might not be a finalist. I might have zero panels. But it's gonna be fun hanging out, and it's gonna be fun meeting people and talking about the next project. The journey of getting to the next project and the next creation of the next project has to be where the joy comes from, mm -hmm. because the business will not give you joy. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, talking about networking, that's that's half the reason I started uh, Atlanta Film Chat with Marlon Coffey, um, who I'm, most people wouldn't even know her. Um, we were we would go to parties, networking parties, and talk to each other. I'm like, well, why are we here? <laughs> it's, it sucks. Like it sucks. Like for introverts, like you just like I I don't want to break into that little circle of friends, whatever. So we were like, well, we'll start a podcast. We'll force them to be our friends for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked, and it kept working. Um, and I have, I have legitimately gotten projects based off of the people I had on the podcast, including producers and stuff. And we just talked about stuff, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm looking for XYZ. You're like, oh, we have XYZ. And there it is. I'm not saying the solution is to start a podcast, which <laughs> maybe it is. I don't know. It worked for me. But, um, but yeah, you got to find your thing, because going to parties, man. That shit is fucking terrible. <laughs> um, um, but I want to have time for uh, audience questions, so if you have everybody start raising them up. Um, but uh, but if not, um, uh, John talked about a little bit about about writing it to to get it made. Like you're trying to sell it. Did everybody was that in in your minds? Like I'm writing this to to make this, or was it like I'm writing to practice and just get better, and maybe I'll make something down the line? You know what I mean? Because I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of festival winners, they win a lot of festivals, but they have they haven't w made anything, mm -hmm. and I just always wonder about like like okay like these are obviously really good, why are, why are none of these getting made you know, uh, so I guess just talk about that from from your perspective like actually is it is this a, a piece to to admire or is this a piece like this is going to be my launching pad? Uh, yeah, I can go. Um... So again, going back to the novel, um, that was kind of like a passion project. And passion projects are expensive. Um, so <laughs> I am definitely on the boat of, I want this, there's a goal for my work. Um, this goal again is to um, connect with people in the animation space, connect with um, people in the film and television industry. Um, and I'm a very competitive person. So I was kind of like, oh, I'm about to kick with this script. <laughs> that is the goal. That's why I do the feedback. So I, just for my competitive drive, I was like, oh no, I'm trying to see this through. I am like, puts my money where my mouth is. So if I'm making it, I'm bragging about it. And people ask, oh, can I see it? I'm like, well, not right now. But uh, yeah, soon. So yeah, I have full intentions of making this on the screen. Okay. Um, just out of curiosity, does anybody in this room know Raymond Carr? Raise your hand if you know Raymond Carr. Okay. Um, so Raymond's my brother, and if you've been in the Atlanta film community for a while, you probably have heard of him. He is currently, right now, in Budapest, teaching Benjamin uh, ben, uh, Cumberbatch. Is that his Benedict. name? Benedict. 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 Yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch, How to Do Puppets for a Netflix show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so when I come here, whenever I come to like the Atlanta Film Festival, I'm always Raymond's brother. 
Uh, and so, except this year. I got a thing. I got a thing. Uh, but no, I, I, like I said, I, I knew this is probably not something that's going to be produced by any television or streaming service. It, it, it falls in that line of too dirty for network TV, um, not impactful enough for uh, streaming services. Um, and so it, it, li it lives in this weird sort of thing. But I also knew, based on the history that I'd had with it, that it would it's a pretty good shot that the story could win some awards. So I'm like, this is a great opportunity for me to kind of use my calling card of saying like, hey, I'm capable of writing. Here's a cool thing. Let's talk about a project that we could possibly sell. Uh, the, the two things I, I think I hate most in the world are acting and writing. Um, <laughs> they're so, they are the hardest things I've ever done. Um, they require way too much mental bandwidth, and I compulsively do them and can't help it. Um, if I am not on set, I want to be on set. If I'm if I'm not writing something, I'm thinking about how do I write this, and. Um, in terms of like making something, you know, as I said, I, I these this started off as one of many many short stories that I had had published, and I thought at, at one point in my life that was it. That's there. They've made their final resting place. They're in this journal that five people are going to read, um, and they're only writers, and then they'll they'll be forgotten about. And um, and now I think, well, you know, maybe they'll be screenplays. Uh, or sorry, maybe they'll be actually made into something. But I think that in order for that to happen, I have to be the one leading that. And, and net, you know, the, the networking is, it's, it's a, I'm not good at it. Um, I, I try to pretend to be, um, but, but I'm not. Um, so in the interim, I'm thinking, all right, so these are going to be films one day. Um, you know, th this one in, in particular. In the meantime, let me make them into, uh, I'll, I was thinking about pitch packages, and I'm like, well, if I, if I turn it into an audio podcast, I can hire actors, I can learn how to produce, I can learn how to, how to direct, it's, you know, um, I, and I can create both um, a, a like sort of table read for the masses and something that will be part of a pitch pack. Let's see what my movie's gonna sound like, and you can download it. Actually, you know what? Do you, have, do you have your phone somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, you know, Spotify or, or uh, Audible. And, and you can download right now the first season of A Blind Play of Social Forces. It's from a, a Richard Wright quote. And uh, you can listen to things that I've, I have made, and then you can rate them and review them, and that will be one way to push me forward <laughs> to turn these into, into films. We just finished recording our second season it'll be out May 4th. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Naomi Grossman who played Pepper on uh, American Horror Story stars yeah. in one of the episodes. Oh, that's cool. Oh, nice. Plus, yeah, that's the one, that's the only claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's 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 that, that, that she was she was wonderful and really downloaded it on the podcast, please, so that I can continue this career that I hate. <laughs> <laughs> The last bit of advice that I had gotten that I had not followed was uh, a showrunner on the last show that I was acting on uh, said, he read some of my pilots and one of the things was, it seems like you could shoot all of these. And I said, yeah, I, I, I write for things that I can film. Every feature I write, I could shoot myself. Every pilot I've ever written, I could shoot myself. So then his bit of advice, his one asshole's opinion was, write a pilot that you couldn't shoot yourself. Like, big locations. like. Cool shit, and that was this pilot. And I had every intention of getting it made. I have every every time I sit down to do anything, my one goal is to accomplish the goal. Yeah. My wife can uh, uh, admit to that with curiosity. <laughs> so I'm one hundred percent result based. Cool. It rules my life. I do not fuck around. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> to piggyback off of that, I do not draw. I cannot draw at all. Um, but what writing something that you can't make yourself forces you to have to talk to people. That's how I ended up learning more about the animation space. Is I'm like, yeah, I'm not making this myself. It's too much work. So yeah, yeah, get out your comfort zone. And it's like there's this idea of like I can do bad up by myself, especially as a creative, and it's. it's it's scary to ask for help, 
and there's a little bit of pride because it's your work. You want to see it exactly in your mind and only you know how to do it exactly in your mind. But sometimes when you force yourself to kind of get out of that mindset, that's actually how you can create works that can reach to other people. That's how you can create works that kind of open the doors to conversations, forces you to just ask questions. Um, I think one of your biggest, like, greatest thing that you mentioned here was how you ask questions. I think we're either too scared to ask questions or this person who is so successful is not gonna wanna talk to me. Sometimes you just gotta be bold and just ask. Um, the way I connected with people in the animation space at least was um, through, through Twitter, through LinkedIn, just kind of randomly connecting. Most of them just ignore the connect request. But some like respond, like people who have worked on large studios like Netflix, like Disney, um, like Cartoon Network, like, yeah, ask questions. Yeah, you, you, I can attest to that too. Like you, you, you never know. Um, like I had Stacey Abrams on the podcast when she was running for governor in 2018, and I just, I just like, I'll, why not? I'll try. Like, hey, I'd run this stupid podcast. Do you want to be on it? And they said yes. And I went to their campaign headquarters, and the whole time I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> but I just tried. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had actors like Eric Roberts on, and like, I just like, hey, will you come on the show? And they're like, yeah. Like. I've gotten a lot of no's, obviously, mm -hmm. but you st the yeses will appear, and you you won't believe some of them, uh, but you don't know until you try. It's like getting locations for a shoot or something. I'm like, oh, well, this this coffee shop will never say yes or whatever. But have you asked? Maybe they will. You know, uh, I see a hand. Yeah, I'll be bold and ask a question. <laughs> yeah, I'm a completely just a random patron. Ryan, is that you? <laughs> um, so I'm really curious. Um, again, just random patron here. Uh, if y'all would uh, maybe talk about your experience with the Atlanta Film Festival screenplay competition and how it maybe, I don't know, hypothetically compares to other competitions. <laughs> just in case there's anybody who's thinking about, you know, applying in the future. I don't know. Well, I'll take, I'll take this one. It changed my life. <laughs> citizen. I can't see who you are, but I imagine you are in no way affiliated with the program, so I'll just say that it is the bee's knees. Yeah. If I could use a colloquialism, please. S small and delicate? Let <laughs> me try another. Uh, it's like a bear in the forest. Uh, uh, now, you were saying cocaine bear? Cocaine bear. Yeah. That was it. It reminds me of cocaine bear and its ferocity and its box office. I will say, in all honesty, um, and, and I, I hate that it's you that asked this question because. <laughs> no, seriously, because. I, I know I've been making some very hilarious jokes here. Um, <laughs> The, the communication was was both human and it was open and I felt like I felt like a person and not just a number and that was so important to me like to to I, I don't know how, how else to say it like talking on the phone to Brian Grady when when he calls to you know to say well you know I just want to let you know you're a semifinalist for Whatever and like and it was so just it was just nice mm -hmm. and um, and and seeing the people who run the festival and people whose names I can't remember but they know who I am and I'm like wow my mom doesn't even say my name right <laughs> <laughs> it was it's really yeah it was nice it feels good. You are handsome. <laughs> <laughs> that shut him up. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll echo everything that everyone has said here. I think the other part for me is that I'm a very much a diehard Atlanta person. I love the city. I love this, uh, the people here. And so what I love about this is it's grown to something that it... Uh, I love this industry, but it sometimes feels like you have to leave Atlanta to do anything with your career. Mm -hmm. And it's so great that this festival has gotten to the point where I feel like I could have the same sort of networking opportunities, experience, 
meeting people that can actually do things for my career that I'd have at any other festival. And so, but I, I still have that connection of, and that, men, that mentality that we have in Atlanta, which is very much the supportive community. And it hasn't lost that. And I think that's so rare and so important and something that's been a part of our community for so many years. We've just never had the platform or the place to show it off to the rest of the world. And I feel like it's exciting to have uh, the film festival here because that's what this is allowing us to do, is to show what we can do. And uh, I'm incredibly proud of that. Uh, yeah, I'm an Atlanta transplant. Um, it was a very intentional decision to come here. And uh, I do not regret that decision at all. Um, the film festival, just piggybacking what was said, is so personal. Um, having gone to another film festival where you just kind of watch the show and go home. It's so different. It's so um, encouraging to be able to connect with people, to be able to kind of have human faces and connect with the people who have made some of these films. Um, another writer who is in the audience today, I got the opportunity to speak with them and it was amazing. Um, and again, there is an energy here and there's a hopefulness here. And this is something I mentioned earlier of I love that we're trying to grow, but we're not trying to necessarily be the next LA. We're trying to be Atlanta, because we ate yeah. Woo! So, yeah. Can I, I think that's I know we're almost out of time, but I, I do think this is super. You plenty of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, oh. is it one thirty? and goes to? Oh, never mind, I'll make it when it's appropriate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had a question here. Yeah. So 